So we are beginning the consigned inventory, which is an excellent concept in the industry actually. So many, many industries are using it actually. So this is being extensively used in many industries actually. You know, see what exactly is consigned. Fusion procurement documentation. So consigned inventory is not here. So I'm not going to the e-business documentation. I go to the purchasing. I go to the article purchasing. I go to the fifth day. Yes, yes, consigned process. So I have a documentation on e-business documentation, purchasing. R12 purchasing and then purchasing day 5. Right. This is the navigation for the consigned process. Right. So, e business documentation, purchasing, R12 purchasing and then purchasing day 5. You will now find on consigned process document. Right. Open it. So, what exactly is consigned? So, the just in time concept by the material management of Apex body, Apex body has recommended that you should have the stock. Uh, in your place, when the when the customer is asking for material, let's say he is not he wants monitor to be manufactured. So when he says he orders today, you must have the picture tube today itself on your line inventory. But that is not possible. If I place an order for picture tube now, the supplier will not take some three days to double uh, the supply. So customer wants it today, and then even though you can manufacture it, but you are not having the raw material in hand. So this is the biggest problem in the industry that. You have to stock unnecessarily. So what they say is you have a zero stocking. And whenever the customer order comes in, you buy and then manufacture and then give it to the customer. So zero stocking at the input side as well as on the finished goods side is a material management concept that is called just in time. So to meet just in time, the consigned inventory is an excellent concept. So what we are going to do is we will now place a purchase order on that. A standard purchase order will be placed. And then the moment you supply is and then when the material crosses the battery limit of our company, we will now create a sub-inventory, a shed will be given to him and then the supplier is going to stock all the items in this place. This will be made as an expense sub-inventory. Expense sub-inventory means what? There is no costing at all on this one. Right? There is no costing at all. So cost will not be there. So our company's asset value will not go up at all. Let's say 1000 quantities have been supplied by the supplier and then kept it. This is called a consigned inventory. The supplier himself will now create the shelf, rack, everything. And then he will also man it and then he will now maintain this sub inventory. Whenever I want, I am not going to perform a transfer to regular. Let us say out of 1000, I need something. Fine. Let us say 200 quantities are required for manufacturing. I will not draw. There is a physically a Lakshman Rekha there. In my company, we have a Lakshman Rekha. We will now drag it tara, 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 and then bring it over here now. So once when he brought it over here, it is our section. Like when Sita crosses the Lakshman Rekha, she is mine. Fine. Likewise, if a material crosses the Lakshman Rekha, it is our section. Okay. So, it will be called transport regular. We will not perform a transport regular. And then afterwards, we will not create a consumption advice. A consumption advice will be created. So, upon consumption advice creation, what happens? We will now process it in the payables and then the invoice gets created only. The invoice will be getting created only. Fine. It will be getting automatically created. So, we consume and then pay. This is called pay on use. Fine. This activity is what? Called pay and use. This is a beautiful concept which is there prevalent in the industry actually. Right? So we are going to see about how to do it now. So we will now go there. First of all, we will now go and then create what? Our, uh, one second, not ours actually. We will now go and then create ours now. <coughs> don't bring it up. Go there. Mm. So go to this place. Let us now create an item. We'll now go to the home icon. Let us now create an item. Go to the product management and then go to the product information management. So let us now create an item for consigned inventory. Click on it. Now go there. Click on create item. Beautiful concept in the industry. And then it's being followed. And then you may have to configure very many items for the consigned one. So it's a T010 is a master. Then click on OK. You know, come in. Ignore the warning because people are working on PIM module now. Then click on this. So item is what? T01 underscore trans underscore item 1. Consigned item. I don't know if it's a consigned item. 
in the Tanzania, you know, good, good, good. and then I go to the specifications, <clears throat> and then I go to the purchasing. In the purchasing, we don't have anything here, no, right? there is no such consign, but it is there in the planning. You go to the planning, in the planning area, we have an item called attribute called consigned. Actually, the consigned is yes, make the item as a consigned item. So, apart from that, there is nothing. No, there no other special attribute for the item to be consigned. Okay, okay. So the purchase price, everything is there. Then goes, I will not associate with the child order. Go to the association and then let me associate with the child order. So go to actions and then go to self add, which the item will be assigned to the child order. Point T01 and then entry now. So let me assign it to the child order. The item is ready. Now we are going to get a supplier. So for the supplier, I am not going to make a payment only upon use and not upon purchase. No, point okay, okay. You want to give a save and close. The T01 cons item is ready. Let us now create a supplier for whom we will not pay only when we use. When he supplies, we are not going to make a payment at all. Click on the home icon and then I go there. <coughs> I go to the procurement and then I go to the suppliers. Now, right? I go to the suppliers and then here I am going to create a supplier actually. So click on create a supplier. So click on create supplier. The third one is a create supplier. I will also say T01 for cons and for sub only. So the business relationship is going to be spent authorized now. And then go there, click on it with the corporation and then the tax on is what United States. I will now give the tax registration from T01 underscore 1234. Here it is T01 underscore 4567. Dunn's number is what? 123, 123, 6.4. And some nine-digit number I'm giving you. So we are now going to create a con supplier and click on create. He's a spend authorized supplier, so we can very well create a purchase order on this law. A prospective supplier, we can only create a what's called a RFQ and quotes. We cannot make a purchase order of this. I will now go to the payment terms and then make one of the payment terms as a default term. Select it and then click on put a tick mark. So at this stage, the profiling we can very well do fine. The organization level, business classification, product and services, everything is good. And then if you are enabling the iSupply portal, the supplier himself can modify all these things. This is the supplier profiling area. So click on save. At this stage, I am now giving a save on the profiling area. Then I go to the address and then let me create an address. So go to the address. Let me create an address. So click on plus no point. The address is now getting created. <coughs> so it is T01 underscore cons underscore address. So only for understanding, you are not doing it like In reality, I have to put the real address. United States. Address line one. The T01 underscore. Address underscore line one. And then I will now go to the postal code 10020 and then give it a tag. I will now choose one of them under which one of them is. This is the state and county gets populated. I will now enable it for ordering and remit to. So I want it. And then I'm not, uh, I will now put some email defense with the me at the review.com. Right? So as a dummy email, ID, I'm putting in a number of address. <coughs> and then here I will now give a save at this stage. Right? And address is now getting saved. So here on the address place, we had to give a save and close, whereas in the profiling place, only a save now. Thank you, one. Save and close, we are not doing that. So the address is getting saved. Now we go there and then create the contact for it. Click on the contact. You're not going to get a contact. So click on plus now. So here the first name I will say Ananta. Two. Nana two. I will put all these things fine. again. I will not put a dummy email now. So we don't want it to. Uh, in some systems, my systems, I'm having a problem. The emails are not coming properly. So go there. Click on it. I will not go to the actions and then select that. So this contact is now residing at which address we have only one address. Fine. Select it and then click on apply and then click on OK by which the address gets associated to the contact. I am not creating a user account. Fine. So that you already seen. Okay. So click on it. I will not give a save and close. So the address, the contact is now created. Now we go and then create our site actually. That is the place where I want to go. So I go to the site now. So go to the site and then click on plus and then let me create the site over here. So drop down the address, the address will be coming. So the site, I will now change it to what? Site 2. Right? The address name gets defaulted on the site. I will now go there. I will now make it as what? Site 2. 
the purchasing and payables is coming from the corner. I will now at this stage give a save. The remaining ta parameters tabulator will be enabled. Thank you, save. The remaining tabulator will be enabled. Now I go to the purchasing area. Fine, click on the purchasing. And then here I am now going to make a payment only on use. No, fine. We only use. Yeah. So here I will now say pay on receipt. I am not going to enable, but I will now enable the pay on use. No. So the moment I make the pay on use, invoice summary level. At what level you want to summarize it? Fine, that upon every result, I will now summarize it. So sometimes what happens in uh, when I was working on steel authority, we used to summarize on the pay slip now, fine, pay site actually. Site level summarization we used to do, but it is a supplier may not agree because he's already the stock is lying in our place for a pretty long time. So upon everything, what happens you would like to summarize now. And each and every transfers to regular regular summarizer. So it is a basically uh, the convenience part between you and the supplier for product on it. So pay on use is enabled with the invoice summary level as a zip now fine, on the purchasing area. Every time, whenever you're doing it, you give a save no, at, at that appropriate pay. You know, save. So the purchasing pay on use is enabled. Remember, upon supply, he will not get any money. Only when we consume, you will be getting a money. Fine. This is called a JIT, just in time concept. Beautiful concept, which is being practiced very widely in industry. You go there, you go to the invoicing area. Invoicing, I will not say it's what is the US dollars. US dollars. And then payment currency is also US dollars. Fine. For the training purposes, you use US dollars only. It works very well because this system has been fully set for US dollars. No, fine. That is why it works. Whereas for other currencies, you may have to apply some localization patch, etc. etc. So on the test instances, do not test anything beyond the US. Now you go to the site assignments. Site assignments are equivalent to multi-org access control of EBS. No, fine. In EBS, we have a concept called multi-org access control. So it is equivalent to that. No, fine. So go to actions and then go to add. No. You go to add it. Then drop down. Fine. I will now put my BU over here now. Fine. The client BU, I'm going to put it now. Fine. Right. And then I will now put the BU, build to BU also. It's not coming automatically. The ship to location, I will now say. These are all the things which are going to default onto the purchase orders. Locked one. And the build location is what? E0 man. <coughs> and then lock. The remaining will be what happens? Uh, uh, filled by the uh, payable steam now. Fine. Payable steam will be filling the liability distribution, prepayment, etc. etc. All these things, they will be filling it up. So it's a use in use supplier actually. I'm going to click on second close by which the supplier is now created. So it's now done. Thank you. So we are not given the site, then you have to submit it. So whenever you have a submit button, we have to submit it. Then only what happens? The changes will be effective actually. Click on submit, the changes get submitted. It's not done. Now I am now going to create a purchase order. So there is a document which says that which which field from will come from which which place now. So there is a document I forgot on the comment. I will say, I will go to OU payment. I think on number two, <laughs> it's something on defaulting. Right? Uh, PO, something on PO defaulting. No, they are not this one. No. Uh, they are not be on two. I will go to the third document. I will now remember the one. Uh, it may be what is a defaulting DEF. Defaulting account, warehouse defaulting, custom problem is not there. So let me go there and then back. One second, I will go back. Go back one level. <coughs> Such on the DEF no fine. Defaulting of documents is also there, not there, not there. I not check on the number one. So much of the things are there, I don't remember exactly where exactly this is there. Yes, this is the one. <coughs> on additional docs records one. 43rd one will now tell you from where and all the uh, whatever the fields will be defaulted onto the PO. PO header schedule distribution defaulting. There's a 43rd document on additional docs one more. Yes. So here if you say the build location. So there are three types of purchase order documents. One is the purchase orders, one is the blanket purchase agreement, one is the contract purchase agreement. So for these things, how the different fields will now default from which which place actually. I don't want to go on. So for a build location, it will now pick up from the supplier side. If you are given a build location, we are given it now. Fine, that will be fine. If you are not given it, it will now pick up from the common payables options. Fine. If this is not absent, then it will now come from the common payables and procurement options. Similarly, the buyer, it will now come from this place. And for the carrier, it is now supplier side, or otherwise the procurement business function, or for this document, it is from this place, for this document, it is from this place. Likewise, each and every field from where and all it is going to default onto the purchase orders is now beautifully written there. So it will be a good Bible for you. So keep it with you and then it will be very helpful for you when you are going to see what how the defaulting takes place under the purchase orders. The 40, 43rd document 
on additional docs form. Now, we'll go there. We will not create a consigned agreement now, first of all. We have to make an agreement with the supplier. Now, find that. So, double you want Now, go there. Click on it. We'll not make an agreement now. <coughs> so, go there. We'll not make an agreement. Then, click on it. Go there. We'll not make an agreement now. So, we'll not go to the manage agreements. We'll create agreement. I'm not going to make a consigned agreement with the supplier, actually. Drop down. Go down. I will not make it as what? Consignment agreement. A consignment agreement is going to be created. Thank you. That is a 301. It is a cons supplier actually. I will not choose the cons supplier. Okay. I am going to make a consigned agreement. Keep on create now. So the consigned agreement is now under process. So here you will have one more extra tab. Normally here BPA will be having only a terms and then notes attachments. So you have got one consigned agreement terms is that. In the terms you know ne negotiate with the terms and then put all this thing down. You will not go to the consigned terms. Here. How we are going to be concerned. Aging onset point will not say at a result. No, fine. When the result takes place, it will not start to onset point. Aging period in EBS is zero also. Here, zero is not accepting it. You need a minimum of one day. That means what? When I receive today, when I make a transfer today, transfer to regular today, I can make a payment only tomorrow. And that is not advisable at all. In EBS, you can very well make it a zero days. Here, it is not accepting it. Zero is not accepting it. I don't know why it's so. So, Consumption advice frequency, how frequently you want to create. Normally, every day will not create because the consignment is already there. His items are available here. As soon as you consume, you make a payment. No, and then Billing cycle close date. I will not put today's date. No, I will not put today's date. So that whatever we consumed, what happens, it will be paid to him tomorrow. Also. And then it is a pay on use is now coming automatically from the supplier. Fine, that. Consumption advice summary level is all off. Fine, that. So default line is a consignment line. The line will be a default message. So, this is what is fine. There are also DFFs which people have created. Okay? So, you can also create a DFF like in the requisition, you are creating it. In the purchase orders, also headers, line distributions, we can very well create it. I go to the lines and then let me add the line. Click on plus, let me add the line. Okay? So, line is what? I know, T01 cons. <coughs> so, cons item one. So, I will not have an item of another cons. It's okay, the price is coming, fine, go to call it. And then everything is okay, fine, go to call it. And then if required, we can go to the edit mode and then give a price breaks also. Right? Price breaks also can be given. I'm not giving those things, fine, I'll see all those things, right? So there's a lab access for you. So that's it. My 3002 consigned agreement is now getting ready now. So both of click on it. So click on submit by which one of the 3002 will be getting submitted. Now against this consignment agreement, I'm not going to make a consignment order actually. I am not going to make a consignment order for this. So we will now wait for the 3002 to get complete. Go to the manage agreements and then query for the 3002 and then see what exactly the status of So click on the search now, you are not querying the agreement. So it is pending approval. See. Go ahead. to come So click on search now. Pending approval. Come on, come on. It is not accepted. It has to be open now. Open. Vandichi. We got it. Now, against this 3002, what I am going to do is I am not going to make a consignment order now. We will not make a consignment order. Click on it. Go there. And then I will now go to the what? Create order. This time the order will be a consignment order now. So drop it down. It is not a normal purchase order. It is a consignment order. It will be referencing the 3002 now. T01. But then the con supplier, I am going to put it over there now. Supplier and site are coming up. So click on create. By which we are not going to go there. Go down. And then here. The moment I put the item, the consignment agreement number 3002 will be coming up automatically. Click on plus number. Let me put the item over there. Because the item is now referenced on the agreement. I go to it. So T01, and then I will now put the cons item over here now. Cons item. Ava. The agreement number will be coming automatically over here because this item is available on this agreement. So I will now go for 100 quantities now. So these are the ones we are now given in the board. So afterwards, what happens? I will now go on and simply submit the order. And then if you go to the schedules and then have a look at it, we cannot make a payment at all against this PV. Once when you receive it, you go directly on it now. It will not allow you to make a payment. So, the payment is normally what receipt match or PO match, but here it is a match option is what against consumption advice. That means what we can pay only upon consuming. 
right? We cannot make a payment. So pay payables cannot release any payment against this purchase order. So okay, no, okay. And then 2005 is referencing the 3002 frank account submit now fine by which is not done. The 2005 you know, oh you must enter a requested date. Come on, yeah. Okay, fine. One of the date is a mandatory actually. Fine, I have not entered it. Yeah. So the schedule date, one of the date is a mandatory one. I say I want it today itself. I want it today. I will not click on submit now fine. So 2005 will be submitted. So 2005 is submitted. So the document is now submitted for approval. Fine, well, that's it. Now wait for the document to get approved. Fine, well, that's it. Now go to the manager orders and then query for the 2005 now. Now click on search now. The searching one. E is the buyer. Fine, well, the pending approval. <coughs> so click on it. So we will now make a receipt of 100 pound list. We will now go there. We will now perform a receipt for this. We will now go to the home icon and then I will now go to the supply chain execution. I go to the supply chain execution of I will now go to the inventory management and then I will now make a receipt for the purchase order. I will now go to the inventory management and then click on it and go there. And then here in the task list, I click on it. I will now go there and then change it to what receipt. So there are five different areas are there. Fine. We don't have any time to go through all these things now. Fine. I will now go to the receipts. And then click on the receive expected shipments and then we will now do it now. What is the PO number? Manage orders you can see the 2004, isn't it? 2004. So click on search now. Fine. So it's a 2005 number. Oh, yeah, the supply one. Con supply one is what? It's a 2005. Quantity quantity is the whole thing. 100 quantities in 10 is 1000. So 100 quantities have been ordered. Fine. The 2005 is the P1. You know, that's all right. I will not put the purchase order number 2005. And then give it a tab and then click on search now. Fine. Hey, come on, 2005 is the one. Oh, God. The thing is what? The org has to be changed actually. Okay. We have to change the org. Okay. Well, well, well. So, we are not given a what's called a yeah, data access for this. Now, data access is required because of which all of the org is not coming. So, let us go there and then give the data access for this. So, go to this place. First of all, we have to give the data access. Then only the org will be coming. Thank you, God. I will now go to the setup and maintenance. So, a security is required. Yeah, security is required. Thank you, God. I will now go to this place. Go to search now. Go to the manage data access. Right? Manage percentage. Data access. We need a security actually. So we will now have to grant a security, then only it will be allowing you to receive in the inventory. So click on plus open. You know, go to give a security. So let me provide my supplier name by EMP1. EMP1 is the one. So for which the receiving agent is the one which is we are going to receive in the gate actually. Receiving agent, I will not make it what. Receiving agent is only inventory or no mind. So the inventory or come on, where is the inventory or inventory or is a T011. So don't put the zero out of and the master or no. Is the receiving agent is not coming properly, right? Or you see the what is the right? Receiving agent is not and the inventory or that and that is not shown. Everything has to be done again. No fine, zero one one. So similarly, the warehouse operator. If I click on plus now, I will now give a warehouse operator also. I'll go there. So the T01 underscore EMP1 now kind of that model. So the warehouse is the one. I'll go there. I will now put the inventory org over here. Kind of that. T01. T011. T011. Click on it. And then click on plus now, I will now make inventory manager also. So there's a T01 for EMP1. We can even duplicate it also. There's a duplicate icon here. That also I can use. Go there. Be the inventory manager. So we are now provided security so that what happens that these org, these roles can access these orgs also. T011. Now all the three access are being given. Receiving agent, warehouse manager, and then inventory manager. Now we go there and then we will not try to make a gate result. We will now make a gate as a key. So go there, go to the place. I will now go to what? Supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. That will now make a gate as a key. Click on it. We will now go to what? Receipts and then go to the receive expected shipments. We have already given a what is called a security. So the org is coming. So 2005 is the P1 number. 2005 and then give it app. And then we are going to make a search now. Click on this. We are going to make a search. So it is now coming fine. Go there, click on it and then we will now receive it. I'm not going to exhibit. 
when you are making a gate is it what happens we are not going to guru against this one now so uh, you will not come to the next stage man will not say 100 quantity is the one total quantity which i am going to receive actually so we will not perform it i will not put the quantity as 100 here and then click on create receipt the sub inventory will not be coming now fine click on the gate click on create receipt and then once when you create a receipt this is called a grn <coughs> goods receipt note number we are going to create now so we have to give a value addition to the grn actually by providing what are the bill number what are the other numbers fine there are so many information that there so that will give you a lot of value addition to this one. the consignment has come from supplier and then is now closing the gate actually the shipment number is 1 2 3 the packing slip number is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and, all that. and then the number of units is uh, stored. Likewise, way bill number, bill of loading, everything you go and then click on submit. The GRN gets created with a lot of value addition to the shipments actually. So, we are now giving a lot of value additions to it. So, we got the GRN number getting created. The GRN number is now created. <coughs> so, once when the GRN number is created, <coughs> click on it. So, the 2001 is now created, click on it now. You will not deliver it. Thank you. We are going to deliver it to the inventory. You will not go on and deliver it. Click on it. You will not go there. So go to the put away now. Fine. Put away receipts is the one by which what happens? We are not going to deliver it now. Fine. 2001 is the GRN number. 2001 is the GRN number. So click on search now. Fine. We are going to make a search. We are showing you. Fine. Select it and then click on put away. And we are going to put away. So put away. We are going to do it now. So by putting away. Fine. Click on it. Put away. We will now deliver it to the inventory. 2005 is the PO number. Everything is coming. The sub inventory has to be populated. Now, fine. I will not populate my expense sub inventory. Mm -hmm. It is not our stock, and so it has to be an expense. Now. In expense sub inventory, I am populating it. So the company's asset will not go up at all. Thank you for now, if you go and then have a look at the stock, the entire stock is owned by the supplier and not us. It will show you the entire stock as supplier is owning it. Fine. The put away transaction is created. Fine. Well, on, now. We will now go there, click on done. Now, fine. We will now have a look at the stock. Now. So go to this place and then we now go to the inventory here now and then click on manage item quantities and then have a look at it. So go to the other part. So go to this place and then we now have a look at it. So item is what? T01 underscore cons and then give it as item will be coming. So when you give it as right, click on search now, find it will show you. The entire quantity belongs to supplier and not is where I was actually. The owning party is supplier and expand it. It will show you 100 now. <coughs> So expand it. And then here in the sub unit level, if you keep on, what happens? The consign details will be coming. If you click on the consign details, it will now say who is the owner of this. So the owning party is what? The supplier is the one. Now let me consume around 25 quantities now. And let me perform a consumption 25 quantities. Now the, the his, his ownership will now come down to 75 quantities. Thank you, Now We are going to do the consumption now. We will now create a consumption advice. So go there. We will now go and create transfer to owned now. In the consign inventory, we will now click on the create transfer to owned. So we are going to transfer it to ours now. Likewise, what happens? You know, transferring it across the Lakshman Reka over here. <coughs> I will now click on plus now find. Create consumption and create transfer to owned. Item is what? You go there, T01 underscore cons, and then give a tap. Item will be coming. And then we will now make a search of this now. We will now see how much is now in the consigned area. You make a search, it will show you how much is the consumption. This is the one, select it and then click on apply and then click on OK. So by which I am now going to perform what? A consigned transaction. A consigned transaction will be made now. So we will now make a consigned transaction. So 25 quantities I am going to consume now, out of which. We will now consume 25 quantities. Put a transfer to 25, you got a 25 quantity for that. So click on submit, by which what happens? This is now consumed now. Now, his stock will now come from 100 to 75 actually. His stock will be coming to 75. So, tomorrow when I run the consumption advice, it will now create an invoice and then it will also make a payment actually. So, everything will be done tomorrow. Because we have an aging period of one day and so, what happens? We cannot do anything today at all. So, to wait for tomorrow and then create the consumption advice. So, we have performed the transport regular. And then we will now create the consumption advice only tomorrow. Whereas in EVs, it's not so. I can even create it today itself. Right? I don't know why they have made like so. The transaction is now on. You go there. We'll now have a look at the item quantities. Fine. Go to the manage item quantities and have a look at it. Now you can see his stock will come down now. Right. It's a T01. Let's go cons. And then give it after. Now click on search now. It will now show his stock coming down. So you go, you go there, click on it. And then you can now see the consigned details. It has to come down. 
So click on outside. The total stock is only 100, but out of which what happens, you cannot see that. Uh, okay, fine. It's okay. <clears throat> the stock office is what? 75. Is consigned stock. He, owning, he is now owning only 75 commodities. So this way it works. Right now. So tomorrow I will not run the consumption advice and then that will be doing it. So that's it. No go there. No close it and then we will not stop the meeting now. <clears throat> and recording, let us stop now. So you cannot practice, you can just watch. I will not share the screen. Now I go there, click on it, you know how to get it. <clears throat> so I will not go there. I will not go there, I will not log in. <clears throat> So I will be logging with yesterday's credentials only. Fine. Uh, and the T01 EMP1 is the one I am like, oh god, somebody has again changed it here. <laughs> I don't like how oh, oh, people are liking this. I don't understand. Now I will not go to the supply chain execution. And somebody please make a change. No fine. Bring it back to the original one. So supply chain execution, and I go to the inventory management. Let's go ahead. I will not have a look at it. So click on it. No go there. Go to the item quantities. Manage item quantities is the one. So I'm still working on yesterday's prefix only if I click on the manager item quantities, go there and have a look at it. So it's a, what's called T01 and it's called cons and then give it up. So T01 cons and click on search. So you can now see the total stock is 100 if you expand it, right? out of 100, supplier owns only 75, 25 has already been transferred to regular. It has already been transferred to regular. Click on it. Supplier owns only 75. If you click on it, so initially supplier was owning in the entire 100. Since we made a transfer to regular of 25, now supplier's stock is only 75 here. Now I am now going to create a consumption advice and then I am going to make a payment to the supplier actually. So that is the next activity. So I will now give a right click and then I will now give a duplicate now. I am now going to make a consign. <coughs> so this one. So here what I am going to do is I will now go there. So the first activity is what the payable period must be open. We have to open the payable speed. Click on that. No go there. I will open the setup and maintenance and then open the payable speed. <clears throat> so go there, go to the setup and maintenance. And then here I will now go to what? I will now go to the financials. Fine. It's manage invoice options. Fine. That is the one first year. Fine. Manage percentage. Invoice percentage options percentage. So this has to be set first of all. Fine. Manage invoice options the one you have to set up. Then afterwards you open the open the period. So manage invoice options. I will know is a scope specific task, and so I'm now doing it from my FSM now. Fine, click on the select scope. So click on the select scope, and then drop it down, and then go to select net, and then click on apply and go to task. <coughs> so select that, and then I'm doing on apply and go to task. You go there. I will now query my T01. T01, I'm going to query. Click on search now, it will be coming over here now. So click on search to be coming. Select it from the left hand side. You click on select and then click on save and close by which it is now getting selected now. Now I am not going to get to the invoice options. So manage invoice options is the one which you have to set up. So for pushing the data from the purchasing to payables, this is the first one which you have to set up actually. So everything is coming finally. Invoice currency, you drop it down and then make it as a US dollar. And then the payment currency, you make it up fine. Go there. It's a US dollar. Right? You can now see the business unit name coming up on the left hand side top. Right on it. And then here the payment priority, everything is okay, fine. All other things are okay. There are mandatory fields are already filled up. So the remaining fields they will be teaching you on a, on a financial training when you undergo it. Fine. I am now only filling the May payment. Uh, what happens? I don't say is the standard. I think is a pay group. One standard pay group is available. So let me choose it now. Right. Standard is available. Let me choose the payment query group as a standard on fire priority. Everything is best. You go down in the bottom. What happens? The payment terms is immediate. Fine. Everything is set up. So the complete thing will be ta taught to you in the financial study. But this is a basic thing for pushing it from the purchasing to payables. Fine. Well, I click on save now. Fine. I am now saving it. I have now filled up all the mandatory fields. Whatever is already there, I am now leaving it as such. Fine. The full explanation will be given in the financial study. So by which we have now completed the invoice options for our business unit. The invoice options for the business unit is now completed. Now we have to open the GL period as well as the payables period. Fine. Both the periods has to be open. We will now go there. Click on it. Fine. Click on the home icon. We will now go to the general ledger. General accounting. We will now go to the general accounting. I hope that somebody is now making a change now. <laughs> this look at me. I don't like it at all. General accounting and then click on the period close. General accounting period close. I am going over there and then I am going to see whether it is not done or not. See, you don't have any data access at all. Fine. So, so first of all, I will now see whether the role is there or not. First of all, 
and then afterwards i have to provide the read access so only when you provide edit access it will be possible for it to open the page in the active folder so it's not there so it's not giving you blah blah error so the screen is itself is lost fine it will not work at all that's the biggest problem so let us now first go to the security console and then have a look at it whether we have the specific rules or not on this now go there i will now go to the tools and then i go to the security console fine let me have a check of the rules whether we have it or not what is like i go to the users area go to the users and then go there so T01 is the one, you query for it. I have no T01, EMP1 I am working upon. So click on it and now see whether the roles are available. So there are three roles on payables actually, fine. Accounts payables, fine. Accounts payables, the manager, supervisor, and supervisor, all the three are available now, fine. So as far as the payables is concerned, all the three are available. I will now see the general accounting now, fine. So general accountant and general accounting manager are required for opening the period. So we have the requisite roles for doing this job now, fine, of pushing it from Purchasing to payables, so fine. That role is available. General accountant and general accounting manager is available, as well as you have these three roles also available for the payables processing. So only data access has to be given. No point. Since we are not given a data access for this now, it is like a security for the general accountant and general accounting manager. We are unable to open the period. In fact, click on now. Let us now give the data access for this. So click on the name and then go to the setup and maintenance. Any doubts, you please open up your mic and then speak then and there. No. Uh, otherwise, I will assume that whatever I say is understood by you. Over there is a manage percentage, data percentage, access percentage, and then no point. Manage data access for users. So click on it. Manage data access for users. I'm not clicking on it. Go there. So I will not give a plus and then I will not add it. So here the thing is what T01 underscore EMP1. So I'm not using the EMP1. It is a general accounting. Fine. Gen. <laughs> you put it. It will not come as what? General account and no point. So general account is the one I'm not going to give it now. And then go there, click on data access set, and then put the T01 over here now. T01. I will not put the primary ledger on this. I will not duplicate it. And this is a duplicate on I click on duplicate and then I'm giving a data access for the general accounting manager also. So the duplicate I'm not going to. So it's the general accounting manager. Delete everything. The general G here. General accounting manager. So general accountant has been given. General accounting manager also I had to give it access. So this is basically for SaaS compliance. The SaaS implementing authority has given to every uh, implementer like uh, SAP, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, Oracle, everything. Right? They have to be compliant on the uh, data access actually. <laughs> so T01, I'm going to give it November. So it's a private level. So we are now given data access for these two roles. Now if I click on save or close. So it is now perfectly set actually. Now since it is a major change, you log out and log in. And go there, click on it. And then any major changes must be followed by a logout and login. Sign out and sign out. Now we have now set the invoice options, and then we have now given the data access also. Now we will be in a position to open the periods actually. So we will be in a position to open the periods. I will now go to the general accountant. Fine. Good, thank you. Fine, somebody has changed it now and brought it back. <laughs> People have the what happens, sir? especially when those who are working on HCM will now love, love that uh, layout only, springboard layout. What to do? Fine. So, because for them that is required, because they have to do a lot of activity on that on that visions layout only. So they immediately change it to this, this, this one. Now, right? Whenever it changes, you please change it back. <laughs> See, it is not for the HCM team. This uh, this instance is purely only for you only. Right? But they also work and then they change it now. Isn't it? That is not correct at all. So the T primary ledger is coming. We are given a data access now. General ledger is not open. Now, right? I will not click on the general ledger. Right? It is never open for October twenty one. Right? Click on it. Let's now open it up. So go to the general ledger. Other, let me open up the period. Yeah. So the first period is Jan 21. Fine, click on OK. So the first period gets open. So it's morning. Fine, click on OK. And then it says that if you open Jan 21, there is a no period can be opened before that. No, fine, that is a warning. It's OK. We know that it is not possible. And there is a refresh icon. Fine, click on refresh and then see the GL is now getting opened or not. So we are refreshing it. So once it is completed, it will show the Jan is getting open now. The, the concurrent program is running on the back end now. Now you can see that a Jan is open and then February is in future actually. This is in a future period. This is now open. In this place, January is open. The February is in the future now. Now we'll now go there and then open the target. <coughs> go to the actions and then open the target period. I'm going to open the target period, drop it down. And then here <coughs> you go and then open up to November also. Friend, doesn't matter. Up to open, you can open up in one go. No, fine, click on open now. 
the action will open all the pages up to normal number. Okay, it's opening. So refresh it. Keep on refreshing it. So you can now see up to June it is open now. Right? No opening, opening, opening. November is also open. So October and November are open. So the, the periods for the GL is open. The present period is October. So if you give it done and then come out of it, you can now see it's open. So now the payable period also has to be open. Next we will now open the payable period. It is never open now. If I click on the payable period, let me open the payable period. So it dropped down the first period from the account. So it is now coming from December 21 only. Fine. Now it has to come from January 21. Tell me what I have to do for that now. Anybody? Can you make a guess now? It is not visible basically. Whatever on the GL I opened, it is not visible at all. January 21 also I opened, but it is not visible. So to make it visible, what I have to do now? And anybody? Anybody? Please make a check. Guess now. From Jan 21, it has to be visible now. It is not visible for me. What I have to do? If it is visible, it is okay. If it is not visible, what to do? I made a major change on the periods actually. So what I have to do now? Come on, nobody is able to guess. As it is already open, right? You no, know, no, it is not open. Payables is never open at all. Only GL I open from Jan 21 up to November 21. Payables I have not opened, but it is not even visible there for me. The Jan 21 is not visible. What I have to do? I made a major change on the GL now. The sign out and sign in. Exactly. Who is this? <laughs> Aditya. Aditya is very correct now, fine. Aditya has very clearly told that whenever you make any major changes, Aditya, you are new for this, no? fine. You are not attending the fast four days course, isn't it? Yeah, today I joined. Oh, fantastic. Then that means well, this guy has got a very good knowledge now. Fine. So sign out and sign in will now bring you. Fine. I told you in number of times in the past four days, but people are not remembering. Come on, yeah. Whenever something setting set, set up and maintenance, we are not setting. We are not changing the settings. It's just a, a we open period. the periods. It's a major change. Any major change, if it is not reflecting, immediately sign out and sign in. It will be visible now. Got it? Yeah. You know how many times I might have told five, six times in the past four days. Now. Please remember it now. Please remember things, whatever I am saying. So, general accounting and then go to the period open. Right? You see, Aditya is an experienced guy. Aditya, you know efficient, isn't it? No, no, no. Okay. I don't know. Okay. You know e-business basically, isn't it? Yeah, e-business, I know. Very good, very good. Fine. See, even though you don't know fusion, he immediately guessed it. So, in e-business and all, there is no need to even log out and log in. Fine. Log out, yeah, that is not. It comes automatically in e-business, fine. It, 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 it reflects immediately in e-business now, fine. Here, here only there is a log out, log in problem is there. Nebus is an excellent one. Keep on it. I will not drop down now. January 21 will be coming. Keep on it. Remember, any setups you have made and then any transactions you have made and then if it is not appearing, please immediately log out and log in. It will all come. This is a standard thumb rule actually here. Now. Excellent Aditya. I will now go on and refresh it. So once I refresh it, you can now see this one. So once when the period gets open, I will now open up to November. <coughs> Then we can start to do our transactions. Generally is open. You're not coming. Anywhere. You go to actions and then you go to the open target period. And then mm -hmm. I will now say up to November, I will now open. And then click on open point. No. So click on yes. Now you keep on refreshing, it will be done. Now I am now going to create the consumption advice now. Fine. I am now going to get the consumption advice. That's what we have seen now. So I don't go to the procurement documentation. And I am now going to the EBUS documentation. Go to the purchasing. Purchasing R205 and then go to the 9th, you know, see the consigned process. So, whatever you have consumed by a transporter regular, we are now going to create a consumption advice only on next day. Whereas in EBIS, on the same day, you can very well create it. I don't know what is the bug or I don't know. I have no missing a setup or not. Because sometimes the supplier will ask you immediately, hey, are you a transport? Please make a payment immediately. Because the consign, the stock is already lying for 15 days and then you are not paid. And then you have transferred something at least for that. Why don't you pay now itself? So that way they will ask. Right? The system is not allowing for zero. It is allowing only for one day. So yesterday we transferred 25 quantities to regular. Now for which we are now going to perform consumption advice and then make a payment to the supplier actually. So this is a, I don't know how to set it up actually. That problem, is, that issue is still remaining. If you know about how to do it, please educate me or educate all of us now. How to make zero days as the, uh, what happens in your period now, right? Consumption cycle. Right, zero days. So number is open. Right, click on another file, and then again, since it's a major change, have a habit of what logging out and logging. Right, you can now see the payables and then GL fields are open. Log out and log in, and then it will now create the consumption advice. Now it will now get pushed into the payables. Now, <coughs> click on it. 
we will now create the consumption advice over there. I will now go to the tools and then I go to the scheduled process and then let me uh, run the consumption advice. So click on schedule new process. Go that is the what? Create cons. Right? Create cons and then give a tab now, right? It is the create consumption advice. We will do it. So on the scheduled process, I am not running it. So create consumption advice is the one thing click on OK. Is not getting done. So click on OK. So it will ask for the parameters you have to pass on the parameters. So the supplier is what T01. And of course, cons and then give it a tap. The supplier will be coming. The supplier side, you drop it down and then choose it. No. <coughs> Click on search. Search. And then I will now say display lot and zero numbers. If you say you can very well display it. group by transaction type, you can even group it also. And then create a consumption advice report also. You can create it. So once when I submit it, it will be creating a consumption advice as well as it will not push into payables. It will be pushing it into payables also. So 300 is not running. It will automatically create an invoice in payables. Actually. It will automatically create an invoice in payables. We have the sufficient rules as such, as well as the periods are open, and then the invoice options is also fully set. So one going to run. So create consumption advice there. So it will automatically trigger a yeah, pay on uh, what happens, uh, uh, use invoice actually. A use invoice will be getting created automatically. That seems to be. The use invoice. So create consumption advice is not running now. It is for yesterday's consumption, which is aged by one day. So we are given an aging period of one day. Zero days we are unable to do. So if you succeed on zero days, please tell me. How to do it? I don't know. <coughs> so consumption advice is now getting created. And you can see the import payables invoice has got triggered actually. The consumption advice report is now getting printed. And like what? The import payables invoice is not running. So it automatically triggers the import payables invoice. So print consumption advice is also running. So we'll now print it and then see this. So any report can be seen by a what's called you can go there and then do it. So consumption advice is now completed. Importing is going on. So print is now completed. No friend, I'll now wait for it to what happens. The report is also going on. So consumption advice report is ready fine. Go there, click on it. I will now have a look at it at the bottom. So click on it, we'll now go there. I will not see is the output. So, is the report there will be a republish icon will be coming for the output now. Right? Wherever you have a report, you will be getting enough. Right? Click on the republish reports. We can very well republish and then see it now. Right? So, click on the wheel icon on this and then export to PDF. Export to PDF. You are not going to export to PDF. So, no more than how look at the consumption advice. Click on open it up. So, you see, uh, consumption advice has been created. So, you want us. So, it is for the 25 quantities it has created. It is not created for only one of these. It is not transferred to own transactions right, on which what happens it has no got created. So we have the consumption advice report. Now we will now see the invoice report. Down or close it now. Close it. We will now have a look at the invoice. Import payables invoice report is also completed. We will now see click on <coughs> refresh it. It is in a ready state only 317. So it has to go to succeed and open it. We now got succeed and finish point. Now go there, go to this place. And then click on republish it now. And then click on the wheel icon, export to PDF. We'll have a look at it. So we are not having look at it. Click on it. Now the import invoice program is running up and oh, nothing has come in at all. And there seems to be some problem. Okay? No data found for the audit report. No data. Rejections reports also nothing is there now. Why it's so? Because I don't know payables, I'm not very clear upon this. Okay? Import payables import invoice. Fine. Import payables invoice has succeeded. But report is not come at all. I will not see the log of it. No, right? Import papers invoice log. Will be execution there. report should come, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's there. No, fine. Report is there, but it's not saying no invoice at all imported. Why? And click on it. I will not click on the log now. I will not take a copy of the entire one. I will not see that on the one. I will not open up a word file and then see this. I will not open up one your file and then go to the new and then paste it over here. I will not see whether you are able to see anything or not. Page up, page up. Ah. <coughs> Then finish setting up, checking, checking, everything is coming. Import invoice fetched is zero, but created is zero. Why? Was IDR prerequisite job? Why you have to click on it, click on it. Current timestamp is so and so. Product interface and error table for you. Setting, set, setting is within 30 days of the initial load, scheduled process, 
can you see any errors here which is which you can understand actually oh god i need a finance guy to give me error why it has not created it i don't know i couldn't understand this one so mother upload nothing is understandable actually product interface and error table it automatically will be purged it has to come now right? it will also show me right? the report is not showing me anything click on don't say no is there any error uh, concurrent for this now anybody knows it any, any error concurrent can be made now right? so this is not giving anything input payables invoice is also not giving me any output now consumption advice is created but in, import invoice is not running now ah, ah. so let us now go to, go to the payables and then see if i click on the duplicate now right? You know, try to manually create a one no for this. Go there. So I will now go to the payables. So I go to the payables and then go to the invoice. We will now make a check whether the invoice has come here or not. So go to the manage invoices now. Now go to the manage invoices. And then query for the supplier and then see whether the invoice is there or not. Supplier reporting what? P01 24 cons and get out. And click on search. I will now say 60 days and then give a go now. <coughs> On tabbing the supplier, supplier number has come over here. Now no, see, nothing is there. So let us now try to create an invoice here and then straight away see whether it will not be able to do it. Now. So here uh, it has to uh, import now. Fine. First of all, it has to import now. Import has not come at all. So we will see whether I can do it now. Anybody from finance here now to create invoice? Whether it will work or not, I am not sure about it. Is okay. against the consumption advice. Yeah. Tell can me. you go to monitor process and once can you check the parameters? One second, one second. I'll now go to the monitor process. And then which one I had to check the parameters now? On the so invoice you... payables invoice the import payables invoice, I think? Yes, yes. In this one, you want to see what? You can expand the parameters, the bottom. Parameters, I can expand the parameter at the bottom. You can see this event, all parameter values. I again expand it. Go there. So it is not saying any ERs only. Ah, I couldn't understand this one. So it is unable to import from the interface tables basically. Let us not try to create a manual one whether it works or not. Identifying PO. What is the PO number? Anybody remembering? Ah, oh God. It is on 2020. Then, uh, 0005. 2005. Okay, fine. Okay, we are saying 2005. No, see. 2005 is the one. We will not try to do it. Some cons of error is very correct. It's coming. I will not see whether we can create it manually or not. Otherwise, I will not leave it to you. Somebody has to tell me why it is not reaching the payables now. Right? I normally open the periods and then afterwards it normally used to come now. <sighs> I never used to create it manually at all. I go there, I am not giving all this. I will not put a number of all today. 4001 is a manual number. So it's for 25 holidays. So I will not put 250 and then it will be taxes also will be there now. Right? 25 holidays. And then I will not try to match the line now. Right? Match it. See, on match it. So the 25 quantities which has now been consumed must be available for creation of an invoice. Now, if I click on match, match invoice lines, I will go now. So whatever has been transferred regular is only eligible for a payment actually. Whatever has been transferred regular, that only is eligible for payment. Say available is 25, it's not showing you very correctly. Available is 25 out of 100. So available for creating invoice is 25. Select it and I will now put the 25 over here. Now, I click on the 25. 25 is coming. 250 is there. Fine. Click on apply. Fine. That. I am now creating the line level distributions. Frankly, on okay now. Fine. I am now manually creating it. But why it is not automatically creating it? Automatic creation has failed actually. Fine. Somewhere some mistake. But normally it used to create very correctly actually. So it's all there now. Fine. So the total amount is coming, but it is not showing the taxes actually. Fine. Uh, give us same now. Fine. Because in my instance, in my own, I have not made, created any taxes basically. Had it been vision, the taxes will be coming now. Fine. Click on save now. So click on say I have not created the distribution of the line level distribution is now obtained by matching it to the invoice now and then I will not try to validate it directly. Had it been in more vision, it will not show the taxes also. So taxes is not coming here, the taxes information because nothing has been set in this place now. Because it's not coming. So we are saving it. So afterwards, what happens? It is not validated. Let me try to validate it. Go to invoice actions and validate. If it is validated, it is pack out. Click on validate. It gets set everything. Right? It has to go to validate it.
one girl has told about the parameters. Who, who is she? So I think she knows something about it now. So you please analyze and then tell me why we are. If you are able to succeed on your uh, uh, login, please educate us. It is validated. Otherwise, you only have to pay. I don't know payment. Thank you. So the payment is the next activity you do. So it has got validated. So this completes my uh, consumption advice creation as well as the invoice creation manually, but it has to be automatic. So with which we complete the consigned inventory part. And remember, in way back in 1983, when there were no computers in Steel Authority of India Limited, I used to do this one. Right? They are all manually processed. Wow. So this consigned inventory is a part of a procurement description or they need to buy a different offering? Or this is a procurement. It is a part of procurement. So it's seated, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, it's it's right. Everywhere it is only a part of procurement only because yeah. it is a just-in-time concept. And then uh, we transfer it and then we make a payment. Okay. So, the moment you make the transfer, we create a consumption advice and then we create a, uh, the pay on the suit astronaut in it will be all be running automatically. The, it's called yeah. ERS and use invoice. So, the yeah. use invoice number also will be coming automatically. Then at first, it will land up on the payables over interface to put then it will come to the base tables and then it will be able to make a payment. Now. It is automatic, remember. Yeah. So, here I don't know why it's failed. Right? The consumption advice is not triggering this now. Right? Uh, in the pay on the that this is not a program. Fine. So, there is an import order invoice the program in Fusion, but that is not running. I don't know why. Fine. If somebody knows about what is the mistake I made or what is the setup which I am missing, please tell me. Fine. So, that I will also, will also get educated on this moment. The, in the next four days or five days, if you are getting it, we will again come back to this and then we will now see, it, provided the instance has to work. So, are you all clear on the consigned concept now? <clears throat> okay, let me stop sharing. Stop sharing. I don't know. Whatever the record, I will stop it.